All right, guys, we're here at Rapid TCT 2021 at the Ascentium booth with the HSC 280i HT IDEX machine, which is the world's first truly independent IDEX. Now, what is IDEX? That is independent dual extruder, meaning you've got two different nozzles. And what's special about this machine is those nozzles can actually move totally independently. So you can literally print two different parts at the same time. Right now, it's in mirror mode or in uh, duplication mode, so we're printing two Ulta 9085 parts at the same time. Now, this machine is extremely special because not only is it the first true IDEX machine, but it's one of the fastest machines in the world. At over a or up to at least a thousand millimeters per second, the extrusion rates on this thing are insane. It's developed and designed for production, scale production. You know, a normal FDM machines, you, you know, maybe it takes five hours for a part. This thing will do that same part in about two hours or less, depending on how much you optimize it. And we'll get into the parts and speeds here in just a minute. So this machine, fully capable, all the materials that you can possibly imagine to run through it from Peak, Ultim, PEC, ABS, PCTG, whatever you want. It's an open material system, which is another great thing about it. Not proprietary like a lot of the other guys where you're limited and new stuff comes out. But overall, let's talk about the machine. This is built specifically to be bolted to the ground for the next 10 years. It's built like a CNC extremely robust. The guys that actually created this machine come from the semiconductor manufacturing market and they've got 30 plus years experience each. So they really have made a robust offering here. So let's start from the bottom. What are we, what are we looking at? We're looking at obviously the build chamber, but down here we start with the materials. Now each material, as is extremely important in high temperature, everything absorbs moisture. So we've got individual heated dry boxes for the spools of material. And then it feeds up in through here, and you've got your first extruder motor right here, which feeds up into the filament buffer. Now, what is this? You know, it's, it's, a, it's an actual buffer because this machine is burning so fast that a lot of the time it'll pull the slack out, and on a normal machine, the motor's sinking up and everything, you wouldn't even be able to do it. But this allows a little bit extra slack in there so that if it does have some acceleration, etc., then it can handle that. Then it goes up into the actual machine and down to the hosel. Uh, now, this whole nozzle system, check out some of our other videos for more details on that. It's a really cool system, unlike any other nozzle that you've seen on any other machine. Now, inside the machine, of course, we have the baffling and you have a heated chamber and a heated build plate and everything else, but it's not like other machines where you, you're gonna crank it up to 230 Celsius for, say, Ultim 1010 or something like that. They're actually using an infrared system to heat the parts directly, not heating the whole chamber super hot, you're just heating the actual parts. Now, I've seen some of the development stuff that they did on this back in the day, and they definitely spent a lot of time and a lot of different ways of testing it to make that actually work. So props to them, very, very cool, very great way to do it. And you don't have to you know, wait for hours to, for a huge machine like this to heat up. So again, production at scale and speed. Now, if we just wander on over here to the interface, this is actually super cool. It's giving you the extruder current and velocity and the tool velocity and the, the, the temperatures and currents of everything else. You can change the speed and everything else on the fly. It's got all your critical data that you want to see as it's operating and uh, just very clean interface. Now, when it's not actually printing, there's a lot more features that you can access on this. So really, really cool there. Obviously, it's built for industries. Let's talk about how fast this is and let's go look at some parts real quick and find out what we're really talking when it comes down to your business. Okay, we've got a huge Ultim 9085 part. Excuse me, PEI Ascentium 9085, not the other stuff, it's the same stuff though. Um, it's the same base resin with their special touch on it. They've got an entire materials team. I believe they actually started as a materials company. So the research and development they put into optimizing their materials is second to none and it gives you a very good result. So this part, how long would this normally take? Well, in normal FDM, this is about 20 hours of printing just for this one part. Looks like they did it in seven and a half hours on the HSE. It's a huge duct. Now, in the materials offerings, they also have a lot of other stuff like molds. They have some great HTN CF25 or polypropylene CF materials where you can actually make 
uh, blow molds, injection molds, different types of molds for different types of plastics like silicone. And uh, you can do a lot with that. This part took, it would have taken six hours, 45 minutes. It took two hours and 15 minutes. That's like nothing. So imagine you have a bill plate full of these. How much time are you gonna save when you're printing at scale? Over here, we've got a uh, test socket for some prosthetics. And normally it'd take about six and a half hours. They did it in three on the HSE. Now, coming along here, moving around, we've got all sorts of parts. They've got ESD safe materials for like semiconductor manufacturing and baking. Uh, lots of options for that. And I really gotta say, this is one of the most impressive parts I've ever seen in my life. This is pure peak. Polyether ether ketone. And this is the largest part I've ever actually held in my hands off of a 3D printer. And it's solid. I mean, you can tell there's not an issue with layer adhesion and that's thanks to their infrared heating system that heats the part while it's printing as opposed to the entire chamber. Really impressive stuff. If you're doing Peak, Ultim, uh, other things like that, they've got some technology that's really on another level. So they use their carbon fiber materials to make a blow mold for PET bottles. I mean, that's something that you just don't really see. This is a jig made out of PEC for some sort of manufacturing assembly type deal or maybe a CMM machine. Uh, and this, four hours and 30 minutes on a normal machine and they did it in two hours and 53 minutes. So we're talking time savings out the window. Uh, we got some more Ultim parts and some more PEC parts and everything. What was this one? We've got an acid transfer duct for wet etch tool set. This is made out of PEC. Normally take five and a half hours. They did it in three. Uh, man, very cool. Now when we get into the other materials like PCTG where they're actually printing at 800 to 1000 millimeters per second, the time savings are even better. Let's go check some of that out. Okay, so when we're talking time savings, one thing they do with the 280 IHT is you can actually use support material and stack multiple parts. Uh, this is really cool. You see this a lot in SLA and everything else like that, but this part right here, the biggest thing that it was, was this took 48 hours and 50 minutes on a regular machine. But this printed on the HSE-280i in 15 hours and 47 minutes, which is, God, that's like 30 hours of savings. That's absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, the guys over here at Ascentium are doing incredible things and they're all American made, made in the USA, high quality, and they're done from a very professional standpoint for production and just getting stuff done. So anyway, if you got questions, check out visionmatter.com. Give us a call, shoot us an email. We're here to help you determine the right solution for your business. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Have a positive rest of your day. Check out our other videos and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.